Although the new AMGs are faster and more powerful than ever, I can't help but feel that this once insane Mercedes tuner has become predictably boring. Well, if we exclude that F1 car for the road. Anyway, it didn't used to be that way. Hey guys, Stipe here with a list of the weirdest and craziest AMGs ever made. Let's go. R63 AMG. First one on the list is a... Uh, this thing, a vehicle that's less sure about its identity than an activist with a blue dyed hair. Is it a van or an MPV or a crossover or a luxury vehicle or a muscle car? Well, who the hell knows? What is known though is that the R63 is the perfect example of AMG lunacy that I'm talking about here. Back in the mid 2000s, AMG had one of the greatest engines ever made at its disposal, the legendary, naturally aspirated 6.2 liter V8, also known as the M156. Plop that thing into any Mercedes and you'll create a hooligan with a serious anger management issue. Compact four doors, coupes, grand tours, big SUVs, big luxury cars, and finally, whatever the R class is. Picture this, you had a big, luxurious, well-equipped road trip machine made for the mommy, daddy, and five kids, and then someone at AMG thought, yeah, what if we gave them 500 horses under the hood and the guns of Jericho instead of an exhaust? Well, I'll tell you what if. Mommy would take the kids away and leave your crazy ass faster than you can hit 60. She'll also hate you if you try to hit the top speed, which, by the way, is 170 miles per hour. Pretty good. But honey, x 12 was constantly asking, are we there yet? By the way, only about a hundred of these wonderfully stupid things were sold worldwide. And I can't even say that I'm surprised. It should be she gallant, AMG. I'm sorry, what? Well, as it turns out, AMG wasn't so monogamous back in the eighties when they were just an independent tuning house. Sure, they made a name for themselves by turning luxury mercs into speed machines, but when Mitsubishi approached them with, hey, could you do a little something something for us too? We'll pay you. Well, they didn't say no. First one on the operation table was an awesomely named Debonair Royale, which only received a body kit that's blockier than early Lara's Tatas. Nothing more to say about it, so let's get to the main course here. The AMG Galant also known as the second best thing to ever come out of a German-Japanese team-up. What? Number one is the new Supra, you dicks. Anyway, it was only available in black with a deep dish spoiler that wraps around the entire trunk. AMG badges all over the place and check out what they did under the hood. A legendary 4G 63 two liter engine got new pistons, camshafts, titanium valve springs, and other doodads that help it rev up to 8,000 RPMs and produce 170 naturally aspirated horses. It may not sound like much, but back then, if you wanted more, you had to turbocharge it, which is exactly what Mitsubishi did with the Rallybred VR4 version. Wait, that means an AMG is not the fastest gallant available. Weird, I know. It was also the only AMG ever made that has front wheel drive only, and it's a Mitsubishi. An AMG Mitsubishi. I'll never get used to saying that. S-Class W140 AMG. I'll never understand the need for an AMG S-Class. You have a land yacht that's more luxurious than anything south of Rolls, and then you give it an aggressive kit, a big engine with an FU amount of power, and even a race timer. Why? So you can compare your lap times around the track? It's stupid. Before buyers proved them wrong, Mercedes thought so too. This is why the first ever AMG S, the S70, wasn't exactly an official model that you could just walk in and buy. On top of having a crazy amount of probably drug money, you had to know someone working for Mercedes who would recommend you as a buyer. AMG would then take the regular S600, which is so heavy and giganormous, that people nicknamed it the Cathedral, bore the V12 engine from 6 liter to 7, give it some edgier bumpers, and that's it. Top speed, limited to 300 kph, or 187 miles per hour. But if that's not enough, you could, of course, always ask for more. more. How about that 7.3 liter V12 that was used in the CLK GTR, Super Sport, and later even in the Zonda?
that's the OG S73, not what they're selling today. And it's so rare that you'll have an easier time finding a nude photo of the Pope than one of these bad boys. Speaking of rarity, there are also 10 wagon versions too, all made for and forever owned by the Sultan of Brunei. Money, yeah, makes everything possible. The 6x6. If you need more proof that money can buy anything, then look no further than the AMG 6x6. It's the civilian version of the military version of what was a military vehicle in the first place. Wait, what? Although the G was originally developed for the army, it would later be offered to the plebs as well until it ended up being this, a highly capable, luxurious off-roader that hardly ever leaves the city and is mostly adored by girls. Certainly a change in the image was needed, and this is it. Okay, it doesn't have a machine gun, but it does have that AMG twin turbo V8, which sounds like one. That hunk of an engine also helps the 6x6 go from zero to 60 in under eight seconds, despite weighing over four tons. That's faster than some Ferraris, you know. However, the main thing here is still the number of wheels and everything about them like these locking diff and tire pressure switches that completely ruin the hot tour of the otherwise luxurious interior. The sheer size is further exaggerated by the enormous wheel arches and the ability to drive clean over most goats. That wouldn't be possible without something called the portal axles. Unlike the regular ones, which go through the middle of the wheels, portals are positioned at the top, and that's what gives the 6x6 the highest ground clearance of any road vehicle. Great, if one day you end up driving on Mars. <laughs> I guess. C30 CDI AMG. Do you know what CDI stands for? Common Rail Diesel Injection. Yes, diesel, an AMG diesel. And no, it didn't work out very well. Diesels are not the best choice when it comes to high performance cars. Compared to petrol engines, they're much heavier, don't rev as high, and nor do they produce as much power either. On the flip side, diesels do sip less fuel while offering plenty of pulling power, which makes them great for commercial vehicles like trucks or vans. And that's where this AMG inline five diesel comes from, a sprinter van. Okay, they did change it quite a bit, like increasing the displacement from 2.7 to 3 liters and installing a bigger turbo, among other things. That pushed the power up from 170 to 230 horses and the torque to almost 400 pound-feet. As a result, the smoky AMG would do 0 to 60 in 6.8 seconds and on to the limited top speed of 155 miles per hour, which is respectable for a 2004 diesel, but for a performance car that cost around $45,000, not at all. That kind of money could get you a V8-powered S4 or even the best ever M3. Hell, the proper AMG C32 was just $6,000 more, and that one could shit all over the measly C30. No wonder that just two years and 690 stupid buyers later, the diesel AMG was gone, never to return again. 45000 Last time a set of wheels was so overpriced, it had an Apple logo on it. CLK DTM AMG. Yeah, I know, it's an alphabet soup of a name. Anyway, a simple recipe for making a crazy car is to put a very powerful engine into the smallest body that can fit it. The only question is, how much power are we exactly talking about here? Well, in the case of the CLK DTM AMG, it was almost too much. But let's back up a bit. This DTM is Mercedes' way of congratulating themselves for dominating the German Touring Championship four years in a row. The name, the body kit, and the amount of carbon fiber would suggest that this is a road-going version of the race car, but really, it's more of a tribute. Except the tribute was far more impressive. Instead of being limited to four liters at 470 horsepowers only, with this one, the AMG guys were free to use the supercharged 5.4 V8 making 580 horses. To give you an idea of just how much that is, at the time, the only Mercedes that had more power wasn't a Mercedes-Benz at all. It was the Mercedes McLaren SLR. I'm sure the DTM could have matched it, but they had to justify the price difference somehow. The top speed was also limited to 200 miles per hour. Again, probably because without it, the DTM would have been too threatening to the SLR. Needless to say, to the state, there's still no compact Mercedes that can match the sheer brutality and barbarism that was cramped into this 20-year-old DTM. Tribute. Now, before I reveal my AMG number one, here are some honorable mentions. Let's see if you can guess them. C30 
CLK GTR Straßen version. But you know what's even faster than the German Touring Car Championship? Endurance racing. You know, GT1 class, Le Mans, the flip. Uh, slower cars, see them. Here we go. Oh my God, oh my God, the Mercedes has taken off. That's the rules said that these race cars had to be based on production cars, and in the case of the CLK GTR, that wasn't the CLK. The only thing that these two ever shared were the headlights, taillights, and the grille. In fact, it would be fair to say that the GTR was based on this, the McLaren F1. He ain't lying. In order to beat McLaren, Mercedes secretly bought one of the race cars and asked AMG to copy almost everything without the teacher noticing. And guess what? It worked. Then, as per rules, they also had to build and sell at least 25 road cars, which the GTR was supposedly based on. That means that somewhere out there, there are two dozen lucky people who can do a school run in a freaking race car. No problem. No questions asked. Naturally, thanks to the aircon, the stereo, and all the leather, the car felt a bit less like a torture chamber, but other than that, the changes were minimal. The most significant change, however, was the no racing rules engine, which again grew in size as well as power. Significantly. Expensive? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yes. In 1998, one and a half million dollars was the Guinness record, a record which these cars held for the next 16 years. In today's money, that's over 2.8 million, or in other words, more than the AMG one. Basically, the CLK GTR Straschen version is still the ultimate AMG. Anyway, that's it for today. I'll see you in the next one.